Today we're continuing our discussion on inventory costing. In this video, we're specifically talking about weighted average under a perpetual inventory system. And I'm your instructor, Brandy. So under a perpetual method, remember that every single time we make a sale, we're going to make two journal entries. Our first journal entry is to record the sale and the payment that comes along with it. So you're going to be debiting accounts receivable or cash and crediting sales revenue for the amount that you're charging the customer. The second journal entry is to account for the cost of the inventory leaving your warehouse and up until this point it has been given to you. This video is concentrating on how to calculate that cost of goods sold and inventory number under a weighted average method. Under the weighted average system our goal is to give every unit of inventory a standard price when we make a sale and you'll see what I mean when we go through an example. So this is the data set we're going to be using for our example and if you've watched any of the other inventory costing videos it's the same data set. So you guys can compare how the different methods change the inventory costs in these transactions. I'm just gonna make a note that we are under the weighted average method and we're using the perpetual inventory system. So I'm gonna set up my template for my table. I'm gonna have an area for my date, an area for my description, an area for our inventory or our warehouse, and an area for a cost of goods sold. Let's just take a run through this table first. On January 1st, they're giving us our beginning inventory amount. On January 7th, we made a purchase of inventory for 750 units at $7 per unit. January 13th, we made a sale of 650 units. On January 20th, we purchased 400 units at $4 per unit. And January 27th, we purchased 300 units at $6 per unit. And on January 30th, we made a sale to finish off the month of 700 units. So now let's start putting these things into our table. We're going to go through one by one and remember that our objective is to calculate our cost of goods sold when we make a sale. So my January 1st beginning inventory is still sitting in my warehouse so it doesn't go into cost of goods sold yet. I'm putting it into my inventory at 500 units at $5 per unit for a total cost of $2,500. Once I'm done with that I'm going to check it off as being done and I'm going to move on to my January 7th purchase and I'm going to do the same thing there. When we purchase inventory it comes into our warehouse until we sell it to a client and once we've put that into our inventory we can check that off as being dealt with. I'm noticing that the next transaction I have is my January 13th sale of 650 units. And as I said, our objective is to calculate what our cost of goods sold is whenever we make a sale. We're trying to assign a uniform unit cost to all of our inventory items that we're selling. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the total of the unit, so 500 plus 750, and we're gonna take the total of the cost. And now we're going to divide the total cost by the total number of units. And I'm gonna do this somewhere else on my page in a different color. So $7,750 divided by 1,250 units. And that gives me $6.20 per unit. I'm going to stick this $6.20 back into my table in another color so I can know this is calculated by me. I did that work. Now when I make my sale, January 13th, I'm going to be removing 650 units from my inventory and putting them into my cost of goods sold. And the cost on each of those units is going to be that $6.20 per unit. We would have two journal entries, remember? The first would be to debit our cash or accounts receivable and credit sales revenue for whatever the customer is being charged. The second journal entry is debit to cost of goods sold and credit to inventory for this $4,030. And that's what we're calculating here. We've dealt with our sales transaction, so let's check it off and move on with our calculations. On January 20th, we made another purchase, so I'm going to add that in. When I purchase my inventory, it goes into my warehouse, so I'm going to put it into my inventory column and check that off once I'm done. And then on January 27th, I'm making another purchase of 300 units at $6 per unit for a total cost of $1,800. And I've dealt with that, so I check it off in my table. Now I notice that I have another sale on January 30th, so I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to total up my quantities and I'm going to total up my total cost. So my quantities, I'm going to take the total of all of these here. For my total costs, I'm taking a total of all of these numbers here. Again, somewhere else on my page, I'm going to do my calculation. $7,120 divided by 1,300 units gives me approximately $5.48 per unit. 
You'll notice that I rounded this number to the nearest penny. I'm putting this number back into my table in a different color. So now when I make my sale on January 30th, I'm going to take 700 units out of my inventory and put them to my cost of goods sold. And those units are each going to have a unit cost of $5.48. My total cost on this transaction is $3,836. So again, if I was doing my journal entry, I would start by debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales revenue for the amount I was charging my customer. We don't have that information here. The journal entry we do have information for is our debit cost of goods sold and credit to inventory for this amount we just calculated, 3,836. If you are trying to calculate the ending inventory, we could finish off our calculation in the inventory column. We have 600 units left and the total cost is $3,284. If you wanted to know the total cost of goods sold for the month, you would take the cost of goods sold from the sale on the 13th of $4,030 plus the cost of goods sold from the sale on January 30th of $3,836. And altogether, we sold 1,350 units. So now that you've watched this video, you should be able to calculate and record the cost of goods sold under the weighted average method using a perpetual inventory system. Thanks for watching everyone.